Greetings, Dr. Jeffrey Scott, and this is my weekend market update for the week ending Sunday, April 16th, 2023. I'm actually doing this on Saturday because I've got some travel to do on Sunday. I title this, Will Persistent Core CPI Lead to More Hikes? My email address is hgsidoc at gmail.com. If you want to support what I do, please hit the like, the up arrows, subscribe, hit the alarm to get noticed. I respond to comments, positive and negative, either in the remarks section on YouTube, or if you're not seeing this on YouTube, you can use my email address. This is for educational purposes only. Anything I talk about should be taken in the spirit of education, not investment advice. I'm a doctor, not a broker. I'm independent. I've paid for every tool that I use. And trading involves risk, and you alone are solely responsible for any investment decisions you make. Well, it's not 15 days. It's like two days now. On Monday starts Well365 uh, Summit. They happen four times a year. They're awesome. I'm speaking on April 22nd at 10 a.m. Why are they awesome? Because you get 40, 50 different speakers, even more um, talking about how they trade. Many of them, like me, will be using wealth charts during the presentation. And then it becomes the least expensive time of year, typically, to buy wealth charts and the various add-ons that people offer. If you haven't registered yet, please use my link. No, I don't get compensation, but I try to stay involved in these events. But since I don't have a mailing list, it means I have the least amount of people signing up on their link. So I'll have that in the YouTube box. If you like these videos, you want it more often, go to stocksanddocs.com. Unless I'm on the road, I'll put something up most days. If there's a, ba a major market change that I need to talk about, um, even if I'm on the road, audio won't be as good as like it was Friday morning. Um, but if I think it's something needs to be said, I will do something. If you want more of this, I do live meetings twice a year. One's a low budget, one's a moderate budget. When I say moderate, it's closer to $1,000, the second meeting. This is the West Coast meeting. It's June 9th through 11th in Orange County, California. I will be there live. David McMullen, who's just an outstanding trader. I've learned so much portfolio protection and ideas from him over the years. Chris White, the proprietor of Edge Raider, and then Ron Hyatt from Financial. Uh, we'll all be presenting. It's only $400. Only 20 spots are available. And if you're interested, there's Greg Mills' email address for more information. So I always like to start these by printing these off or taking these out of uh, highgrowstock.com and then just looking at the markets, what we saw the last five days. So the first thing is mostly green. Dow up 1.2, 1.4, the NYSE a little bit less than one on the spiders. The Qs were laggards, 0.2 on the Qs, 0.3 on the NASDAQ. And finally, small stocks actually did something up 1.5. However, each of these were um, down on the week if you look at the one day perform, or excuse me, these were up on the week in green, all down on Friday if you look at the one day performance. The big winner on the week is Bitcoin. If you've been trading either Bitcoin or one of the derivatives like Riot, Mara, um, MicroStrategy, which I've been playing, you saw some outsized moves. Natural gas bounced a little bit, but 4% on $6 is 24 cents. It's hard to get excited. Volatility actually increased this week. Now, the other thing that I always find amazing, we still are holding well above the 1013 bottom. And if you see from the 1013 low, um, you could see that the NASDAQ itself and the Qs are still in a bull market. Look at some of the others. Biotech up 27%, FANGs up 47 um, gold up 23 So yeah, Bitcoin up 133 from its lows. We may still be in a, technically in a bear market, uh, but there are parts of this market that are doing extremely well. This is a Q Edge tool. It gives me a dashboard intraday shows me what's going on. The first thing on Friday, you could see that the only sector showing any um, positivity was, interestingly, consumer discretionary. 
you could see the buckets we'll talk about them later but there's not a lot at the bottom or at the top that means there's no signal there when I look up here I can see that 65 percent of the stocks are above the Bollinger Band that's slightly bullish <clears throat> and inferior to what it was one day before and you know it was a down day on Friday you could see 91 percent of the sectors were down 76 percent of the industry groups and 69% of the stocks. And when I look at the five day period, you could see it's the opposite. So the week was a lot stronger than Friday. The month strong, excuse me, two weeks strong, the month strong. So, you know, we expect April to be a strong month, the back half of March to be strong. And clearly over the last month, we've had some strength in the markets. Now rates turned up. Here's a 10 year on the left, 30 year on the right. Notice the markets in yellow kept going higher despite that. I think there's going to be a lot of um, give and take in the rates and the market response to that as we look at the war between more Fed tightening. As I mentioned, the CPI core was higher than it was last month. So it's you know about the same, a little bit higher. So persistent inflation there versus are we about to see a recession now if you look at credit risk we are off the lows but we're also off the recent highs that's something i'm watching if we look at the philadelphia reserve district 3 philadelphia diffusion index every time we drop below this where my arrowhead is there's been a recession well we've dropped below it and that goes back to the 70s so this is one of the reasons why I think we have a recession. If we look at the 10-2, the 10-3, the vast majority of times when you drop below, you get a recession. And boy, we're still way below. And notice for the most part, you don't get the recessions until the rates, the, 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 the short, the, the two or three year starts to rise. And when will that happen? Excuse me, the two or three year will start to fall because you have to get it below the longer term. And when will that happen? That'll happen when the Fed has to start cutting because the economy is slowing. So it's sort of a, which is the chicken or the egg? Is the recession cause the rates to come down and fix the inverted yield curve? Um, that's kind of what I think. Breath signals, stocks above the 200 stocks above the 40 both were up so some of the longer term breadth is still strong interestingly the t2121 the 12 week new high new low actually gave up quite a bit of strength so breadth was mixed weak on the short term holding on the longer term buckets as i mentioned before two-thirds of the stocks above the midline mildly bullish very few stocks above or below so really no signal from the buckets on the Hindenburg Omens, we wouldn't expect to see this fire until we get closer to a market top. And obviously, we're probably a lot closer to a bottom here. But it's still something to watch. And why? Because I look at these new lows, and I'm a little bit concerned when I start to see a lot of new lows on the NASDAQ. Um, the NASDAQ, the Qs may be doing okay, and the big cap NASDAQs may be doing okay. But the average NASDAQ stock is making new lows or a, a higher percent are making new lows. And if you look at the NYSE, you could see the new lows have not vanished, but they're much less. We're actually seeing new highs. So the NYSE, maybe it's you know, the makeup is different. Technology on the left, banks and energy probably coming off the bottom on the, on the NYSE, much more broader index. Now, the markets on the week were higher. Here was a little dip below. But if you look for the most part, if this is the zero line and ERG being EPS rank, relative strength rank and group rank, I take the prior week's fundamentals and then march forward a week. And I could see that ERG really, you know, you were up pretty much across the board except for this little bit in the beginning. Notice in the tail and in the head, there's not very many stocks. So I don't pay much attention to it anyways. Relative strength. You did better with relative strength here, but the best return were stocks that were coming, you know, that are, 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 are beaten down with poor relative strength. The thing that really stood out to me is when I ran, and there's a lot of lists here, I have things like my holdings in it, but I also have um, some of the IBD 50s and the Market Smith. When you see almost everything black, that tells you it was a strong week in the market. 
Know your news and earnings on the left. Each arrow represents a time for a Fed head to shoot down the market. Um, if the market seems to be leaning towards a pivot, they're going to tell you there's no pivot coming and they're going to focus on inflation. Um, remains to be seen what happens. <clears throat> We're going to get some housing information, the beige book. Then we get jobless claims, manufacturing on Thursday, exports, and then we get um, PMI for both services and manufacturing. So still a lot of news. And welcome to week one of the big week of quarterly earnings. We have two or three of these to follow. But you could see regional banks on Monday. We have Netflix on Tuesday, some airlines coming in, technology coming in, a lot of regional banks over the week. It's a judgment call to hold stocks over earnings dates. It's bad judgment to not know when your stock's earnings date is scheduled. Personally, I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to things that I don't understand right now. What I don't understand right now are home builders. Um, rates are higher, yet housing stocks are resilient. So we got some housing stock earnings coming this week. It's going to be interesting to hear what Horton and others have to say about their business. So finished mostly higher. Um, I think that as the week went on, the concerns about the CPI rose. Higher rates in the facing of concerns of recession lead to some intra-week volatility in prices. Earnings reports pick up as we get the first heavy week of the system of the season. Friday, big bank surprise, but on Monday, we'll see how widespread the underlying damage is in the regional bank sector. And my market timing model, as we're going to go see in a moment, still remains in a buy, except for the IWM. I'm still positioned to the long side, but I'm not all in. I'm certainly not in margin. I got some cash on the sideline. I add as I feel better about the market. Um, and I've got a tight leash on the positions I own. Again, just to remind you, and the link will be in the remarks section of my YouTube. Love to have you um, join me on Saturday. Um, I think you'll get a lot out of it the whole week. And uh, please use the link, as I said. So let's go take a look at the charts. So that was 12 minutes. And let's see what we can see in the charts. So here is wealth charts. and This is what I basically do every night. I start with the hot stocks and I try to see if anything is coming up. Um, bullish short term high yield bond ETFs. So strength in the bonds. Well, that's interesting. High yield are even more risky. So we'll see. So short term junk bonds have improved. All right. Well, that's interesting. Um, but then I see SQQQ and the dollar. Neither of these are um, friendly. Now, they had bullish moves, but they're still bearish posture if you look at WellScore, WellSignal. And then if you look at the, the junk, it's still down in the 600s. Then I look at the indices. Um, stay with the dailies. Make it quicker. Um, if we look at the dailies on the S&P, you could see that we had kind of a, I bet it qualified as a doji day on Friday. So indecision here, but within the prior bar. Now, it was kind of an interesting on session here, a couple sessions. Um, sorry about that. Um, when you look at Wednesday's bar, it was a bearish engulfing pattern. And that really is an ugly bar and really one that tells bad things. Now, when you get a signal and the signal fails because we actually had a very bullish bar on Thursday, that's probably pretty bullish. Not much happened on Friday. So we ended the week off of the highs of the week, but much closer to the highs than where we open. Strong week on the S&P and you could still see a positive MACD. All right, what else do we got here? Let's take a look at the Qs. So the Qs, um, kind of wedging here, a little flag type formation after a run up. Still more bullish than bearish, like the S&P above the 50 and the 200. Okay, nothing wrong there. Let's look at the diamonds. Uh, 
The diamonds are in a nice run up um, and again didn't do much on Friday but it's an inside bar sort of in the middle of this Darvis box range. Um, and let's see where the you know where we go this week but above the 50 and 200 it's hard for me to be bare outright bearish on any of these indices. The weakest is the Russell and even the Russell had something to like this week as one, two, three. it was up off of this level. Now, it didn't do much on Friday. In fact, on Wednesday and Friday, you had pretty negative looking bars. Still worried about the Russell. As I mentioned before, it's the one index not on a buy signal this week. And it's below the 50 and the 200. And it looks like that 50 is heading towards crossing below the 200, which obviously is not a positive finding. VXX, um, or here we're going to look at UVXY actually for volatility. It was down on Friday, really hasn't done much. If I look for, for example, the VXX weekly, you could see it came off of a recent spike, um, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Let me just look at UVXY, make sure that's not a, a split. Yeah, I'm thinking that that was a split that wasn't calculated, but clearly, um, volatility is not doing much and if you look at the dollar the dollar actually came off of its lows kind of looks like an island reversal until this dollar breaks above the 50 or more importantly my line in the sand I'd still put the dollar in the weaker territory next I want to look at commodities um, just get a sense of what's going on we, it looks like we did have an island reversal I think I talked about it on my Friday video for the market open where um, we traded down hard on gold, 1.77 on Friday. Hard's probably the wrong word. Reversal as well, 1.81 on silver. Oil still hanging up after the OPEC cut, which really boosted oil. And then natural gas, even though it was up on the week, still pretty hard to get excited. And then the one thing that might be worrisome besides the IWM is the 10 year actually popped back up above its 200. It's clearly been weak for a while. Next up is the 50 um, and we'll have to monitor that. Rising rates would not be good for technology. My weekly timing model looks at the price above a 30 period WMA and then the status of the bongo and I am a buy Green Bongo above on the spiders, the same on the Qs, and the same on the diamonds. And I'm still in a sell on both parameters on the IWM. So not rah, 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 this market's going to the moon. I'm still a little bit concerned, but I'm certainly not leaning bearish on those other industries or sectors rather. TLT versus SPY. This is one I'm going to look for, and I'm going to look for it probably on a shorter time frame um, during the day just to make sure that we're not you know, one would expect this to spike if we think we're going to have a, a recession. And so I watch that. Um, interestingly, so, and often in a weak market, bonds will do the opposite of stocks. But I think, you know, the last, you know, 2022 was bad for both. And clearly bonds don't like rising rates. And that's what we saw in 2022. One of the concerns has to be that the equal weight um, spiders are lagging the, the cap weighted spiders and continue so the market advances are not breath we saw that in the Nasdaq new lows um, you can look at semiconductors broad based XSD versus SMH and this is trending favoring the SMH 50 versus fangs favoring the fangs and the Q face favoring the IWM is still favoring the Q's not what I want to be seeing if I want to be really excited on the market didn't try to figure out what I could tell you here um, communications is still strong and notice it's pointing up and I took off the money bags because technology seems to be weakening real estate really weakened this week I thought that was interesting staples have come down utilities discretionary picking up so that tells you that there's some bullish undertone because you'd expect the opposite. They thought the market was going to roll over. Technology seems to be improving. And actually, I think I'll, I'm not, let me just look at biotech here. So let's look at IBB. 
because I think part of the strength now is IBB, is biotech. And let's just do a, a, a biotech IBB versus the spider. Keep with the theme here. This is how one of the things I love about wealth charts. Type in spider or go to here, the one-to-one. -one. Now I got a ratio chart. So it's come off the bottom. Um, nothing's really knocking my socks off. Financial's a little bit better. Industrial's a little bit better, but still weak. Energy responding to the rate, to the rate cut, to the output cut. I guess that is a rate. What the heck? All right, let's go into our heat map. And the heat map is mixed. Well, that's what you'd expect when you're looking at, at a market that, um, you know, was pretty much down on Friday, up on the week. So Friday was down, and I don't think there's a way here for me to change this to look at the week. That would be pretty cool, though, wouldn't it? Wealth Scanner, this one sort of was weird because we see a lot of index ETFs, bond ETFs. We don't see a lot of specific sector ETFs. Um, the diamonds, the spider, the spider world XUS ETF, high yield commodities, S&P 1500, and then we get to home construction, the NASDAQ composite, spider growth. So the first real, uh, the first, you got only ones that are on this list here, the top 10 or so, are communications and home construction. Remember I mentioned Horton and others will be having their earnings over the next couple of weeks, and I'll be paying attention to that. So I started scratching my head, because usually you see sectors or um, ETFs of, of industry groups popping up and I really think this is just telling me it's it's a narrowing market not led by the sectors but being led frankly by the larger cap stocks that are driving the index so I went into my cat scanner and what I did and this is how I quickly find what's working what I might be interested in the market my combo leaders list which I include for wealth charts um, owners in my uh, remark section there's a code and if you've never done it before it's simple 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 in wealth charts you just have to go to a watch list and then hit the little funnel go to import with code I call, you know you might have to already build a watch list but I I have one that's called combo leaders and then I paste the code and then you get my list of stocks so I like my combo leaders list. It's these are stocks that come from multiple lists, high relative strength leaders, market smith list, IBD list, HGSI list, trade station lists, um, lists that I get out of left field, people lists that people send me. And what I'm really trying to do is build a basket of stocks that people think are potentially actionable. And then I start and work my way down the list. Well, let me show you how easy it is here. Now about my setup because you could have different setups. I want price high than five, 500,000 shares. I only want bullish dots, no bearish dots. And I'm looking for a reversal in the last two weeks. And that reverse, I want bullish daily and bullish weekly. Let's rank them by dots. And let's start with JP Morgan. You want to see one of the strongest stocks in the market on Friday? Wow. So this is a stock that got beat up with the rest of the banking sector after it was running up, got slapped down. But look at Friday on earnings. Massive volume, a big gap. So you got big gap dot, volume dot, breakout dot, and then momentum coming out of a squeeze with 90 degree elevation on relative strength at OBV. What a perfect looking chart. It's not overly extended. It hasn't made up the loss from when the market rolled over. I think JP Morgan is actionable here. Autolib. I looked at a lot of charts this weekend. Copart's one of my favorite looking charts in the market. I'll show you that in a second. But a lot of automobile industry um, retailers, wholesalers made the list or made the combo list. And I suspect something's going on in cars. Now, the funny thing is I hear how bad it is for used cars right now, but then I hear that prices are creeping up. So it might, I don't know anything about the industry, so I'm not going to try and sound like I do, but um, a breakout above the 50, an EMS, 
um, volume, breakout, momentum coming out of a squeeze, relative strength and OBV picking up. I mentioned Copart. Let me just show you what a beautiful chart looks like. Um, this is a beautiful chart. Um, breakout here. Notice coming out of squeeze, got some dots and a big run. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Probably too far. Now, this would make my buddy Kathy happy if she still has Axisome. But it might be time for me to get back into Axisome. AXSM is a biotech, small biotech. It's got drugs on the market. I think it has a blockbuster headache drug. It just hasn't gotten the traction yet that people think it's going to get. It is clearly a takeover candidate. And it broke out on big volume above the 50 has momentum, had a three dot breakout here, which was a, even a better place to buy. Relative strength and OBV look good, not at a, extended at all. Axisome looks interesting. Then you have triplets, Mara, Riot, and um, the third one is MicroStrategy. I own two of the three. And why do I own them? Because these are derivatives to me of Bitcoin. They're large Bitcoin miners, Bitcoin holders. And if Bitcoin does well, these do well. And I think they could have a long way left to run. You could see this guy fell all the way down from the 85 range and it's at 11. It has broken out. Look at all the momentum and volume and breakout dots. Look at relative strength and OBV. Uh, for comparison's sake, you're going to see some similar strong charts. Riot has broken out. And the interesting thing is if you look at what these stocks did during the day on Friday, it looked like time was up. And then where they traded down in the morning, they ran up, traded down, and then they turned around and closed just off their highs. So nice day in the market for um, Riot, Mara. And then let's take a quick look at MicroStrategy, which is a much more expensive stock. And these are volatile. Options are expensive. And you can see very similar to the Mara chart with a breakout and nice run up. And also, I think, one that could go much higher. Miris is a biotech stock. And biotech, I already showed you, had some strength. I don't know what to make of this big topping tail. But you got to look at that volume, momentum, had the breakout day back here or here. Relative strength OBV look good. PNT is point biopharma. I didn't like this chart as much. It's sort of down in the pattern here. I like to see a break above the 200 before I get excited. Um, Steve Madden shoes. I like watching the you know trading videos of Wolf of Wall Street. This was uh, IPO then. You know, again, kind of like the last one. It's got a trading range here that it needs to break out of. Let me just draw a trend line here out of curiosity. But this one's looking ripe. This is looking to me like something that could certainly get moving. So I might look at that trend line and a break above that trend line. So I might put a buy stop just above that trend line. You had a breakout momentum, relative strength, and OBV are picking up. Um, Allison Transmissions, another automobile stock. A this is a OEM parts manufacturer, break above the 50. ELF, yeah, I think this is the old Sally Beauty, but the Ulta ELF are on fire. Now you're talking about a stock. Look at the 99.87. It's too extended for me. Um, just a lot of good-looking charts. I even looked at Marriott. I stayed at the Gaylord on Thursday night in Orlando at a meeting. God forbid anybody do this to me again. Schedule work meetings during spring break in Orlando at the Gaylord. Um, but boy, it's a Marriott. And look at Marriott about to break above the 50 came off a three dot move the prior relative strength and OBV look like they're breaking out. And then in the medical side, here's a beautiful chart, Lanthius. Um, sometimes these high tech growth stocks will stub their toes. And you can't, you can't 
make them dead to you. You got to watch them because they can run again. And this one is clearly running. So there's a lot of what James Ropo likes to call candy stocks that look good. How about PANW? You want to see a stock that's actually had a decent buy point for a change? Nice sideways consolidation. Had an EMS signal, took off above its 17-day. Um, um, you know, it's an expensive stock that's run a long way. But you could get a 20-point move off of this. PANW. So, as I said, James Ropo likes to call that candy. Um, I think there are a number of positions that look interesting. So in 30 minutes, we looked at the market deeply from internals, then a top down looking to see what's driving the market. Gave you some interesting looking picks. Hope you have an awesome week. See you at Wealth 365 and at Stocks and Docs.